Forma and Walt and BGAT and Sun Energy and all you donors that make this possible and Salony all the time friend who put this together uh, you know the list gets bigger and bigger I know this in life I can do a lot of bad things all by myself I can't do anything good by myself so I'm really grateful to Walt and all of you who paid for this and the people that installed it for all these solar systems that were put in last year this is a training camp for Karen relief teams. And since they're right here, my daughters are here. Um, we're in Northern Karen State, Burma. And you girls want to say something? What do you want to say? Thank you. Thank you for what? Thank, Thank you for all the power and the solar systems. And we really enjoy it. Wow. You do? Yeah. Thank you. you do? And what are your names? My name's Susan. My name's Haley. And what are your horses' names? Thanks, George. So, anyways, we use them. The power is brought here to support this training camp. We have 53 relief teams working with IDPs or internally displaced people in Burma, and this camp supports that. This camp also is a place where we coordinate relief, run trainings, get information about activities of the Burma Army, and train our people. So we run computer training right here for all our communication operators, as well as some villagers that people like the Fox, Tudorwa comes and sends to have, have us train them for their own purposes. So all these panels, I mean to me it's like NASA man, all these right here like a space shuttle. All these panels here support up to about 10 computers working. Right now we've got about three or four inside there. That's our main office. Also we have panels down here support the classroom. We have another medical classroom on the other side of the camp that has two panels. Our dining facility, which is a big bamboo barn kind of thing, has two more panels. Our home, which on the weekend becomes a Karen movie center for local villages, has uh, two panels also, and Karen does homeschool above. So that's pretty much the panels. We had 28 panels. We sent two up to the north, and they're cleaning up horse poop. That's another environmental thing to do, and it becomes hopefully some kind of fertilizer. Anyways, we have two more panels up in the north, and then this year you guys brought in 18 more panels. 18. 18 panels for New Generation School, which is pretty amazing little concept of having kids from all over come to a central boarding school as far away as they can actually from the Burma Army in every direction. And they've really gone for it. They built wooden structures, which means that's a lot of investment because the Burma Army can come in and burn it. The Burma Army is only about 20 miles from that school, or about 25 miles from here, this direction, only about probably 10 or 15 miles that direction. So every place here is open to attack. But the Karen way isn't just like, oh my gosh, we're going to get attacked, we're not going to do anything. It's like, I'm alive today, I'm going to make the best of it. I'm going to plant flowers, I'm going to build well, I'm going to educate my kids. And your solar panels coming in now, which are being put up in New Generation School, allow them to have probably the only computer training anywhere out here and actually better than some places in Thailand. So it's not just their vision, it's y'all's vision also, and I'm really grateful. So I want to say thanks, Walt. And I want to say this too, and I told this to Stoney, and that's a great guy you have working for you. I know. Everybody you have working for you is good. Salome is wonderful. Very competent, friendly, warm, flexible, professional. All of your staff is that way. And Stoney, besides the fact he talks too much, actually, un unlike me, He's, I can learn a lot from him. He didn't talk that much at all. But very <laughs> squared away guy. And I like all the people you bring in. And it's very true. And I've been on this border for, well, I grew up in Thailand. So I've been on the border for like 40 something years. But doing this work for about 13. I've never seen an organization like yours that's as efficient, that gives stuff for free, which is great because we don't have the money for it, and are friendly and flexible. And one of the greatest examples I saw was when you just installed everything last year and somebody right away broke something in a really unintelligent way right in front of you. After you told them not to do certain things, they just did it. And they destroyed a $350 piece of equipment right there. And your reaction was, well, now we'll know how to fix it because we've got to replace it. And I thought, 
That's wonderful because people are more important than things. And they got that message, which means they'll do anything for you. And so I think that's one of the, the most important things that makes your organization wonderful isn't just that you know what you're doing and you put in good stuff that we all need. It's the way that you do it. And so I want to thank you for that and thank all the people that support um, these kind of projects. I already asked that God would bless you 10 times over. And not only these projects in Burma, but the other projects that happen around the world. He so has. Thanks and God bless you. <laughs> thank you. What about uh, anything, what's your, what's your next needs? Well, we're going to graduate these teams here on 1 December. And then we'll all go out on relief missions. And we're going to take two of the panels from the new generation, leading them 16, across the road the Burma Army built, which is a major obstacle, into a northern area that's getting hammered pretty hard, but still has some pockets of relative quiet, where we have two, we support two clinics. And we're going to put those panels into one of those clinics. And that's that's another need. If that goes well and that can, they can keep that, then we probably would like another one for another clinic. That's probably the starting point up here. Then. And other needs are we have our teams are spread all over Burma and even though they're not going to be carrying these panels around they operate often out of clinics or places they do need constant power and so I think the first need is across the car road in the north the next needs would probably be in a different district in third brigade where you've been down there and then following that would be probably a whole different area like Sean State um, some kind of system of So there's no shortage of uh, need. No. <laughs> <laughs> One final thing about needs is that almost every village we go to or IDP site in the conflict areas, the current never stop having schools, even if it's open air in the in the bushes. And they all ask for solar panels. And again, they wouldn't be these because they don't need that much power and they can't carry them. They're in a very flexible fluid situation. But if they had, and I don't know how to do this, but they had small flexible panels and a battery, if someone wanted to support that, um, we could make a tour of all the schools, give them how many, however many panels we had, and that would be awesome. Then at night they could teach, the, they could do some of their homework, the teachers could prepare their lessons, they could do special programs, that would be great. But it'd be a, a smaller scale um, solar operation for every village we could support. Yeah, well there's groups that specialize just in that, we can approach a lot of them on that. Yeah, that'd be cool. All right. Great. Thanks. Thank you, sir.